everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching and welcome to January 2020. Can you believe we are opening up a new decade together? This is not just a new year, this is a brand new decade. This is really big and this is really exciting. I don't think I've ever been so excited about the start of a year as I am for the start of this year. And we're gonna do it together. We're gonna to open this year together, how exciting. I wanna welcome all the new subscribers. Thank you so much for subscribing and thank you for your comments and thank you for being part of this. I absolutely love meeting all of you. Sometimes, you know, when I see a new subscriber, I'm able to click on you and, you know, see some of your videos and I just feel like, I'm meeting the most amazing people through this work that I do and the opportunity to, to sit here and chat with you is just wonderful. So thank you so much for joining this community and we're going to take a look at 2020, shall we? Now in this overview, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through an overview of 2020, the year. Okay, I'm not going to look at the decade. We could do that. Um, hmm, I've got a long list of videos to make. I don't know if I'm creating more work for myself. That's easily done. Uh, we could take a look at a decade. One of the first notes I have on my screen is that we're welcoming a new decade. And the fact that this is going to influence language, right? We're going to be able to talk about the 20s. You know, what did we have before? We had the 1920s, we had the roaring 20s. And we had, of course, the fashion of the 20s, the music, and, and we're gonna have new fashion and new music and new culture and all kinds of new things that are coming up. So this is very, very exciting. And one of the things I was thinking about was, you know, in this next year, are we going to be able to touch the decade through the energy of this year? Are we going to get a sense for what the next 10 years is about. That's a question that I have in my mind uh, and I'm only just starting to think about it now. I wish I thought about it yesterday as, as I was preparing these notes. I've prepared my notes already, so why don't, why don't we get stuck in? Now, those of you who are in a rush, if you're in a bit of a hurry and you don't have time to watch my overview, then I've got two words that pretty much sum up the next year. And these are two words that you're going to want to hang on to. And the first word I'm choosing is action, right? This is an action year. This is a year to be doing. This is a year to hit the ground running. This is a year to get things done. Procrastination is not going to work out this year. Uh, and the other word I have is love. And when I use the word love, I mean a mature love, a love that encompasses all, right? All people, all living beings, all things, this whole planet. Okay, so that's the kind of love that I'm talking about. And if you can focus on these two words, and if you can make these two words your priority this year, then I think you're going to have a fantastic year. The other thing that I want to say in short as well, before you run off to your mini reading, is to say that if you're a heart-based sensitive, it's time to step up in the world. It's time to make your voice be heard. Uh, it's time to take on leadership roles. And when I say leadership roles, that doesn't mean getting a job that has some kind of leadership in the title or, you know, this is, this is not that. This is you deciding wherever you are that I'm going to focus on my leadership qualities and I am going to... I'm going to make sure that my voice is heard. I, I think... You know, if we can just as much as do that, right? If we can let our opinion be heard around us a bit more, that would be a really good thing. And I might as well just step into this now. So those of you who want to go off and watch your mini readings, please do. Those of you who would like to stay, please do. You know, get comfy, get a cup of tea, do what you have to do to come and enjoy all this fantastic content that I have now. I've got a bit of an in introduction overview that we're going to go through. As I say, this is a year of action and love. Um, now, where do I get this from? I do get it from the sidereal Vedic system, and I'm going to break that down for you. But I've also been studying a bit more broadly 
I have been tuning into various channelers who've talked about the upcoming year and as well as that uh, I've also been looking at the material from Heidi Sawyer and I'm going to put a link to her below so that you'll be able to see her take on the year of 2020 but her materials are always brilliant. Um, she does an overview of the year and she uses numerology and the tree of life. It's very good content and I've been exploring her stuff since about I think 2016 and I've noticed year after year it's yes it's spot on uh, when it comes to her predictions for the year so she's a really good one and as I say there are various channelers and the other person I've been tuning into as well is Anita Morjani and I'm also going to link to her um, latest podcast because she is about to release a book that is titled Sensitive is the New Strong and that's really where I'm getting this content from about the fact that heart-based sensitive people should be stepping up in the world and should be taking on leadership positions and look you might not get a leadership position in your company or whatever it doesn't matter you know um, all the most powerful people they never care about titles that's why I like Karl Lagerfeld so much he never cared for a title you know and and yet he was the one who did everything who created a, a massive industry and has inspired millions so Let's take a look at this. So, yes, action and love. Um, this content is, is not just coming from me. This is an amalgamation of a lot of people that I've been researching over the last few weeks. Um, and as I say, two links will be included below. However many links will be included below, I'll, I'll mention that as I go. Now, how does this translate through the sidereal Vedic point of view? What, what am I looking at here? Yes, uh, action. I've got a note here, is indicated by Saturn being free of the south node. Hooray, this is so good. <laughs> I'm so happy about this. Wasn't 2019 tough? And that's another thing that I've found in my research as I've been going on, um, I've, I've found this through actually different astrologers' websites and YouTube channels. And, you know, I do quite broad research. Um, there was one astrologer, she's got about 600,000 odd subscribers, really lovely channel and very nice work. And um, now she mentioned, uh, well, I actually didn't watch her thing, but her, uh, on the comments I could see a lot of people saying 2019 was the worst year that they've ever had. Uh, I've had a few people on my channel say this as well. I've had a few of you say that it's a horrible year, it was an awful year, um, really tough, I've heard. Uh, I've been, you know, going back and forth on email with some of you. Yes, some of you have had a really, really tough time. The other thing I want to say about this is that there are some big energies at play even now. January might be a bit tough as well, okay? Uh, some people are going to start the year, they'll have a cracking start to the year and they'll be able to do things and it'll be very good for them. But some people are going to have a bit of a tough start to the year. So that is indicated. There is a lunar eclipse happening. I'm pretty sure that's 10 Jan if I've got that correct. Let me just double check that. Yeah, it is 10 Jan. Um, so that might be a bit hectic, right? Uh, and of course, if this year has been tough for you and you might be just completely exhausted right now, okay? That might be the case. Truly, if you can, rest, rest, rest until the end of this year because as soon as next year begins, did I say this? I, what? Rest, rest, rest till the end of this year. Because as soon as next year begins, you want to go. You want to go for it. You want to get into it. You want to, and it, it might, as I say, it might be slow for some of you. Stick around in the mini reports. I'll, I'll take you through if that's you. Uh, but definitely my feeling on this is, um, and my research on this and what I see as I click through the stars is that uh, when Saturn makes his move into Capricorn, that's going to be so good and I think we're all going to feel a lot freer. Uh, hopefully you feel freer, you feel like, gosh, I can get on and do things now. You know, over 2019 you might have felt delayed, you might have felt frustrated, you might have felt stuck. Um, some of you have some short, sharp, deep things coming up to the fore right now and that's because there's a solar eclipse happening. Uh, so some of you might be watching this in January. If you're watching this in December because I'm recording this, on the 18th of December. So some of you might be experiencing some very unpleasant things now. 
this solar eclipse is coming on the 25th, 26th, depending on where you are in the world, something's going to be eclipsed. Uh, this could be major. This could be really, really big transformation. Something's going to be cleared out. Something's going to go. Something, you know, it could be full on. So some of you are experiencing symptoms of that now. In the lead up, what typically happens is sensitive people feel things ahead of everyone else. It's perfectly natural that you might be experiencing things right now. If you can, if things are tough, please take time out. Hermit mode, get into hermit mode. Um, collect your books and your DVDs and your YouTube videos and lock yourself away and entertain yourself and indulge and do things that are nurturing and good for you, that feel good to you. Really take time out, recharge your battery, okay? That's so important, really important to recharge your battery if that's what you need. Uh, remember Saturn, I mean, we're really looking at kind of Feb onwards. Saturn's going to be all go and you want to be going with him and that's for the next five years. Saturn's going to be at home, okay? This is great. This is really, really great. Saturn in his own home, imagine that. You know what it's like when you've been away for several months and you come home and how good it feels. How good it feels that everything is in its right place because don't forget Saturn's organized, right? You think about his home, it's organized. Everything is in its place. He knows where everything is. He feels good at home, okay? I just know it. I absolutely know it. So the next five years uh, are going to be really good. For some of you, depending on where that sits in your chart, the next 2.5 years are going to be amazing. For some of you, the, the, the later 2.5 years where Saturn is in Aquarius, that might be a better run. I think overall across the board, this is, the next five years are going to be better, I think, for everyone in the whole world. And I'm going to watch that very closely. Uh, but that's definitely my wish and, you know, it seems that that's quite likely. So astrologically, action is, we're looking at Saturn, okay? Now love, where am I getting that word from? This is fascinating. It's coming from Jupiter, all right? Jupiter is going to be with Saturn. They're going to have quite a conjunction and that's really going to mark the year. I think even the next two years, it's, it's quite a while uh, that, that Saturn and Jupiter are going to be together. Let me just check that right now. Hold on a moment. I'll just scoot up. They're together, together, together. I mean, yeah, it comes back in 2021, but not so much. It's really 2020. All right, so love, Jupiter. Now, it's really interesting. I've been talking a lot about love on this channel, and I think the first time I mentioned this was in September when Saturn was stationary. For Saturn was stationary for about three or four days. I don't remember the exact date, but I remember distinctly uh, talking about this. I might see if I can find it. But I remembered saying that I felt a ray of love or I felt a vibration of love. And that, that was very interesting because I certainly wasn't thinking about it or had anything to do with um, love. And I, I, I do mean a kind of universal love. I don't particularly mean a romantic love, but that's included. Um, but I mean a universal love for all, all, the word all, you know, knowing the all, the one, that I am part of the one, um, that when I pray, I don't just pray for me, I pray for all, for absolutely everybody, right? It's that. That's the kind of love that I'm talking about here. And this is Jupiter. So what did we have with Saturn and Ketu. Let's look back at 2019. We had Saturn with the South Node. Saturn which is practicality and, and materializing the world. Um, and we have Ketu which is the South Node, which is past, which is what we've mastered. Uh, you know, and we've had kind of Saturn in this sort of Scorpio area. We've had him come through Sagittarius now. And I've been thinking about all this as well, and it's really interesting. I was thinking about Me Too and women coming up in the world. And, um, you know, we had the voice of Jordan Peterson come up. And, and this was all very linked into Saturn. 
you know, moving through that Scorpio and, and Sagittarius sort of area. Uh, so culturally, it's been really fascinating. So what's happening now? Well, I think, you know, we've got, We've got Jupiter conjunct Saturn this year. So as I was saying, Saturn conjunct Ketu. And one of the ways that I was phrasing that was really to say that it's digging up the past. That was definitely one of the ways um, that I was phrasing that. And I think it did dig up a lot of past for a lot of people. People are coming out of this year saying that they don't, they're not happy with the year. So... Of course we're not, because we're not, we're not in the future, we're not in the exciting, we're not, there's nothing new going on. It's probably felt like a bit of a washing machine, like the same thoughts keep going around, the same things keep going around, right? It's like, where's something new? When are we creating? When are we going somewhere new? When are we doing something? When are we, why are we so held back? I do think that was Saturn K2, and now, I mean, look, expansion time, okay? And the reason I say the word love for Jupiter is because expansion, Jupiter wants you to get married, right? Add another person to your family. Jupiter wants you to have children. Add more people to your family. You know, he's this expansion, expanding uh, sort of energy. He wants that. He wants you to expand your life. You haven't been able to. Uh, de definitely 2019 has not been a good year for that. But going forward now, there's going to be more opportunities to expand life. Jupiter wants you to love what you do right? What you do should be an expansive thing. Your career should be this thing that makes you feel like you're going somewhere with it, right? If you keep going to the same job and you hate it and you can't see much expansion or growth going forward for you, Jupiter is going to want you to change that, right? Jupiter wants you to love. He wants you to love what you do, love your output in the world, love what you put out there and, and there's a, an infinite feeling to that as well there's, an, there's a sense of infinity as well with that now Saturn though is coming in here with Jupiter they're together right and Saturn wants what I'm going to say and I put it in inverted commas on my screen practical love so how do you make this love real and practical in the world and that's why I have the words action and I have the words love okay uh I've got a note here, be prepared to manifest what's in your heart. Be prepared to materialize your beliefs and what you keep beyond, your dreams that you keep beyond this plane, this world, right? Uh, be prepared to manifest what's in your heart. That is actually quite big and potentially scary if you think about it, right? Because what if, what if you carry fear? You don't want to manifest that, do you? Right? If somebody said, take the contents of your heart right now and boom, we'll make it come real. You manifest the whole thing. Do you really want that? That's why they always say, be careful what you wish for. Right? What do you really wish for? And yes, people say to be careful about that. Uh, I agree. I, I agree with that. And that's why it's good we have Saturn here too, right? Slowing us down. I've got a note here this year, your heart will be like touch paper. If you carry fears, you manifest them. Carry love, you manifest that. Okay, I do think there's going to be that quality um, to this year. Energetically, time-wise, it might feel like a fast year. Now, this thing that we have of years speeding up as we grow older, that is just that I know that that's just a function of age, because when you're 50, a year goes fast, right? When you're four years old. A year takes forever okay so it is just a function of where you are age-wise um, but there are I have done some research into this and I have seen that people talk about time speeding up and things like that I've got a note here saying that there's this is going to be a fast year it's going to feel faster why is it going to feel faster because Saturn's not being dragged by Ketu anymore Saturn's free so I think we're going to feel some movement finally Right, so let's observe this. Let's see how true all of this is. Uh, I've got a note fast year. Keep as much of your energy in present time as is humanly possible. Very important. All right, and that's why this practical love, this note about practical love, I think is quite true because we're going to be grounded. 
as well. And we're going to have to be, and I mean, it's Capricorn, right? Saturn's in Capricorn. So, and I will do another video where I look just at Saturn. I'll probably look at Saturn and Jupiter together. So there's more content to come on this. But um, yeah, this is just brief, what, I, what I'm looking at here. <clears throat> I've got a note here, Jupiter's going to want to enjoy. Great. Uh, but Saturn is going to ask you to be real. All right. And that's good too. Okay. We want both. So I'm loving all this. I, I think this is going to be a really good year. As I say, January might be a year to uh, a month to, to watch out for. Um, you know, could be it has its moment of instability as well. But, uh, and that I'm seeing that as around 10 Jan around there. But um, going forward, I think Feb onwards gonna be really, really amazing. So how exciting. Now for news matchup, you guys know I like to do a news matchup where I look at what's been going on in the news and I match that up astrologically. Uh, this time I haven't got so much of a news matchup. The only news that I've seen lately is the fact that Boris Johnson won the election and a lot of people are really not happy about this. And I understand that because I live here in the United Kingdom. I did not vote for Boris Johnson. I'm very happy to say that I voted for my Labour candidate and she won. Uh, so I'm very happy about that. But what if it was the case that I was living in a conservative seat and my person didn't win? Would that then give me an excuse to treat my neighbours badly? Would that give me an excuse to um, sit with family members and, and rant at them how awful it is and how terrible it is? You know, I was reading up on one of the websites that was uh, talking about politics. Anyway, I've got a note here about a lady who wrote on this social media. It was, um, I can't remember, it was a YouTube channel that I tune into on a regular basis and anyway a lady on there had written that she cried so much she gave herself a headache when she found out that Boris Johnson won the election and I get it I really do but what I'm going to say about that and I'm drawing that out as an example because that is an example of what's not going to work next year right because she got herself so worked up and so upset that she gave herself a headache. She got herself so worked up over a person that she's never met. He doesn't know, right? And what did she do? She hurt her own body on that day. Now, look at this concept of practical love and look at this concept of Saturn and Jupiter together. Saturn will look at the end of that day and he's the powerful one here because he's in his own home. He's in Capricorn, right? He's going to look at you at the end of that day and say, well, what was your contribution to world peace that day? And he'll look at you and he'll say, you damaged yourself. And he'll say, that's, that's not a good thing, right? So many people have been venting their rage and anger about politicians but what they don't realize is that it's their rage and anger and it's going to damage themselves and actually if we look at this astrologically we'll see that Saturn has been in Sagittarius right and Ketu has been there and it has been quite a popular thing for people to just people are just openly venting their rage let's go back into 2019 yep absolutely Sagittarius look at that Saturn Ketu together People have been openly kind of manifesting their rage about politicians. People hate Trump, people hate Boris Johnson, people hate, you know, and, and yes, I, I, I don't like these people either, okay? I, I wouldn't be voting for them, I'm not into it. But I'm not going to, you know, I, I suppose I don't have much. Hi everyone, apologies, camera got cut. It tends to do that at the 24 minute mark. Where was I? I think I was talking about the fact that people are openly manifesting their rage or expressing their rage at politicians, and that's a really popular thing to do. Uh, and why is that? I mean, there's an astrological reason. I think I was saying something about I don't do that, and I was probably going to say something about the fact that I don't do it because, you know, I've, I've dealt with uh, my own rage through various workshops and, you know, um, 
with coaches over the years and, and whatever. And so, you know, I was, and this is part of my work. This is part of my work. This is what I help others do. So, uh, you know, that's, that's perfectly fine. Um, but where this is coming from, if we look at this astrologically, we've got Saturn in Sagittarius there, and there's, this kind of, there's been this kind of manifestation of um, people being really, you know, rageful. I'm going to say it. I, there's nothing else to say. And I was just watching a channeler just now, and she had this rage card come up. And yeah, I mean, it makes sense. I understand. Um, it's a manifestation of... You look at it, Sagittarius, right? Sagittarius is, and I've got my whiteboard up there. I won't draw a diagram, but we all know where the ninth house sits, and that's fire. And what else is that? There's government there. There's also government you can kind of see in the fifth as well, but that's a bit different. But I do see government from the ninth. And what else do we have there? Father, right, in the ninth. I read father from the ninth. I know some people read father from the tenth. Uh, and if guided to, I would as well read Father from the 10th, but um, I typically see it from the 9th. And what I see is that people who have issues with authority uh, or who don't pick up their own inner authority and take charge of their own life, right? You know, they might be projecting instead onto politicians. People who have issues with their father, right? And resolved issues with their father from childhood. Okay, so a lot of times when people are just really angry, blaming politicians, rah, 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 you know, I hate you, and there's all this kind of thing coming out. And I mean, this lovely lady, and I could see she's a sweet lady. I read her comment on that, um, it's a spiritual kind of channel. It's not some kind of political channel that I was uh, reading. It was my usual spiritual thing that I, I tune into. And I, I was so sad to read that this lady, yeah, she cried so much she gave herself a headache. I mean, that's just, oh, that's really terrible. And it's so what I would see or say or, you know, if, if I got to look at her chart, you know, there could be some ninth house issue. There could be problem with the sun energy. Um, there could be, you know, and I mean, just generally anybody who is projecting so much rage that these politicians are awful and, and ruining our lives and I hate them and there's that that's some unresolved rage within you and it's likely something to do with as I say something to do with your dad something to do with early childhood something to do with authority something to do with you not picking up your authority over your life something about you're not you're not valuing your own life and taking charge of it and and, and creating what you want to create in the world there's something a miss there's something askew there there's something not right there if you're heavily projecting um, out onto the world and that is a function of Saturn uh, in Sagittarius right materializing that wound really is, is what what it is um, and and you know Ketu energy being there that can be kind of um, bringing up wounds from the past old collective wounds and if you'd watched my bad rap video you would have seen that when I looked at um, which signs are getting a bad rap it was really interesting I, while I was doing that video I came to the conclusion that oh wow yeah it's all uh, leadership signs that are getting a bad reputation so there is some kind of inner resistance to um, even to power actually and there are many people who they don't want to be powerful because and get this because in a past life they have been powerful and they misused it some people are frightened of power because of that reason um, power, power can be a, a scary thing right it's very interesting I could really get into that and talk about that a bit more but let's come back to these notes let's be practical Saturn is saying come on be practical um, I will do that now let's have a look here so she cried so much she gave her a headache yeah okay look 2020 will be painful okay so this rage that I was talking about if you're projecting it out onto the world or and if, let's not forget it's your rage that's hurting you okay so this lady who cried so much that she gave herself a headache right and Saturn's looking at her and at the end of the day says what's your contribution to world peace well you just damaged yourself you know so that's not a good contribution to world peace today, right? Um, 
I've got to note that in 2020, you're going to have a rough year if you're going to be holding on to rage, to anger, to old worn out ways, to old worn out methodologies, to old ways of doing things. We've really got to usher in the new and hit the ground running and it's got to be new energy. It, it is going to be new energy. It, this is Saturn in Capricorn. And, you know, we have been looking at our wounds. Saturn's come out of Scorpio, Saturn's come out of, and you look at that Scorpio. Let's go back a little bit. That's kind of 2015. And I remember 2016. 2016, I remember that was not a good year. And I really got deep into some conspiracy theories at that time. And, you know, and but I consumed them with um, great interest and I enjoyed all of that. And that was kind of 2016, 2017. Yeah, boy, did I consume a lot of conspiracy theories at that time. I watched a lot of David Icke. Um, and then, of course, we had, and that, and that was, that was kind of the election was happening in the United States, wasn't it? And there was, um, everyone thought the stock market was going to crash and there were all these predictions. Everybody thought the stock market was going to crash. And, I mean, what ended up happening was they kept kicking the can down the road, which is really the reality of what happened. Then, of course, we had Saturn going to Sagittarius and we had a bit more Me, Me Too movement. Um, women on the rise um, and looking at beliefs, looking at how we, we treat each other, you know. Um, and then, of course, Jordan Peterson being the voice for men, saying to men, hey, don't, you know. And he was such an important voice at that time. He was so important because men needed a, a good father figure and, and a strong voice and someone to just say, hey, men, it's not all your fault right all this that's going on so that was very important it's 2018 now 2019 you know we're, we're coming out of this year and yes there's there's quite a bit of rage towards politicians and I, I do think it's bringing up this wounding of um that's that's politely being projected towards politicians but it's really we're really just if you're doing that you're really just chronically avoiding your own stuff right so that, that's what's really going on. And what you need to do is you need to turn your attention to your own life and see, well, what am I totally neglecting? You know, what do I need to create? What do I need to build? Who do I need to forgive, right? What do I need to let go? That's the work that needs to happen. And you've got, <laughs> you've got how many days to do it? You've got a few days. <laughs> You got a few days and then uh, 2020 begins and it's all love and action, right? So let's come back to my notes here. So yeah, you've got just a few days left. Sort it all out, clear it all up, and then it's good times. Um, your contribution to world peace is being noted by Saturn every single day, right? Every single day. And that lady, you know, God bless her. I mean, her heart's in the right place, but like, she gave herself a headache, and that's not a contribution to world peace. You count, right? So, and this is going to, 2020 is going to be about getting that balance right between looking after yourself and looking after the other. Um, you're going to want to, if you're a person who always looks after the other, please look after yourself a bit, right? This lady needed to look after herself a bit. If you're a person who only looks after yourself, you got to think about the other. You've got to step into the other person's shoes and look. You've got to become more empathetic, right? Um, so that's going to be really important. I've got a note here. Yeah, it'll be a great year for heart-based sensitive to step up, to lead, to speak, to teach. Anita Mojani is bringing out her new book, Sensitive is the New Strong. I think that's such a terrific title. Um, it might have a different title, she was saying, but, you know. Uh, I've got a note here, space will be made for good people to shine, to make their voice heard. This is going to be a great year and absolutely, this is now the time for sensitives to step up. You look at this, Saturn's going into Capricorn, so the ranting and raging and all that rage stuff at politicians, that's got to stop. Why? Saturn's going into Capricorn. We've all got to grow up a bit, we've all got to become a bit professional. We've all got to, yeah, sit up straight and, you know, wear a suit jacket and crack on and build a beautiful earth, the, the new earth that Eckhart Tolle speaks about. We need to create that now. We need to make progress and we're going to be given energies to do it. We're going to be able to do this. 
and it's happening it's happening so much you look at how many uh, astrology channels have have blossomed and mushroomed in the last few years it's wonderful people are now changing careers and, and doing things that excite them and that mean something to them and this is wonderful you know this is where the excitement is and there's a lot of excitement right and YouTube is a beautiful platform that is enabling a lot of things uh, let's have a look here. So, yep, Anita Murjani says, why are narcissists running the world? It's because us sensitive people don't speak up. I think that's quite true. And um, I guess we just, we need to speak up a bit more. We don't need to become like them. That's the other thing. If you're not like them, don't become like them. I can't become like that. I can't turn into Donald Trump overnight. Ugh, I wouldn't want to. He's very different to me. <laughs> but at the same time, I don't, you know, he's a person, he's doing stuff, so it's okay, it's, it's, it's what is, you know, and, and that's Saturn, that's being a realist, that's going, well, you know, they had an option of two people, and, you know, they picked that one, and that's what's happening, and it's all okay, right? Um, we're going to need to, you're going to want to be able to get to okay quickly next year, okay? That's going to be important. Yeah, that's the note I've got here. If you're resentful, angry, clinging on to old stuff, ouch, right? Expect a bit of a rough ride, I reckon. And I've got a note here. I challenge you. Can you be the most loving you've ever been all year long next year? How would that manifest? How would you do that? How would you be more loving than you've ever been? Because really, that's what this life is about. That's something that I'm now I'm beginning to see through this profession of astrology and it's really very interesting often when I consult young people young people are looking at their chart wondering what what am I here to get and when I work with older people that's I love working with older people because older people are so wise and mature and they know look I haven't got much time left what am I here left to give right and that becomes the all important burning desire uh, for, for older people and that is where you know something like astrology comes into life in, in, in magical ways and then it's then it's a tool that there's being used to serve the all the the all that we all are right so if you can do that as well with your chart this year look at your chart and say what am I here to give uh, that's going to be magic if you can if you can tap into that. I think I'm going to start the mini readings now. I think um, let's just check. I'll just double check that I'm plugged in, and I'll do my usual thing. And I will say, if you would subscribe, that would be wonderful. Do you know it's absolutely amazing? I have a feeling that this video, in this video, we're at 14 minutes. Yikes. Um, in this video, I think we might go to a thousand subscribers. Oh, I'm so excited. That's so exciting. So yeah, if we could, that'd be great. So if you could subscribe, that would be, um, that would make my day. It would make my year. It would make everything absolutely wonderful. All right. I think I'm going to begin now. I think I've got a glass of water. I don't want to pass out. I'm probably going to speak a bit longer for everybody because I've got my um, Flowers of the Night Oracle, which I am going to share with you. Everybody is getting one little word and I'm going to read out the card. And I, I've done that because I just wanted to give you a little gift to start the year, something a bit different and a bit special because I haven't done that on a January video. Uh, let's start this with Aries Moon. Aries Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining I hope you're well. I hope you're doing fantastic out there. Uh, I completely understand if you might not be. If you're tuning into this, watching this in December, now note that I'm recording this 18th December. Um, if you're tuning into this in December, right, I hope your year is still going okay. Um, you will have the solar eclipse coming up. If you're tuning in in January, how did it go? Okay, so it's, you know, it's really interesting. So Aries moon, I've got the notes here, sun is leaving the solar eclipse. So let's pretend that the solar eclipse has happened. I've got a note here, hopefully you're coming out with a fresh new outlook on life. If, if it's yet to happen, I hope you find your fresh new outlook. Uh, perhaps your beliefs have been shaken up. Perhaps you're letting 
you've let something go, okay? And there is going to be quite an element with this eclipse of letting go. We're clearing out a big year here. Uh, not only are we clearing out a big year, we're, we're saying goodbye to 2.5 years of Saturn being in one sign. So this is quite a significant time. If you are tired, please rest, okay? Don't, don't hesitate to take a little bit of time out. Uh, early part of January, please donate old things, okay? If you can, if you have old things to donate, please donate them. Meditate, if you can, setting an intention for the whole year. Now, I've got a, a key word here. So the key word, I've drawn it from uh, these cards. And I've got the cards here, but I won't bring up the card. I'll, how about I just read this, the word. So the word that came up for you was restore. So I'm going to read this out. Actually, I'll read it out at the end. How about I do that? How about I do my little mini report and then I'll give you this as my little bonus gift. Okay, how about we do that? So sun enters Capricorn on 15 Jan, right? And the sun's ready to work. All the energies are getting ready to work. This is pretty exciting. Um, Saturn is, is especially, I mean, he's getting ready to go into Capricorn. This is a big change of foot, okay? It hasn't quite happened in Jan. Um, still could be some unsettling energies for January but um, for you this is an excellent way okay this is great excellent way for you to kick off the year the sun very happy in the 10th house this is very very good keen to hit the ground running okay so you're one of the lucky signs where sun is going to have a good transit mid-jan Venus is in the 11th house oh this is beautiful it's great for romance love general happiness uh, Mars in the 8th all right and that could be providing some tensions um, it could be tiring you out physically okay because that's also your ascendant lord there that's your physical body um, you might be feeling a bit drained uh, if things get a bit over emotional or a bit heavy or you're a bit restless emotionally that could also be a thing um, but on the whole this is a very good start to 2020 if you can truly let go of 2019 Okay, uh, we have a penumbral lunar eclipse happening on 10 Jan, Punarvasu, third house. So what I'm going to say here for that is um, definitely be careful with communication, all right? Uh, lunar eclipse can be a bit unsettling or it can be, um, there can be shifts around that. Uh, I'm not calling it one way or another. For you for some signs i'm seeing it as a really positive thing i'm not going to call it one way or another but I, I will say be careful with communication i will definitely say that and i would say look out for you might be a little bit psychic during this time so look out for dreams look out for signs your guides might really be trying to communicate um, see if your intuition is heightened Mm, and, and watch out for any anything psychic, any psychic activity. I'm going to use that word psychic quite specifically. We have Rahu and Moon together. So look out for any of that kind of activity. It's pretty exciting. Now let's have a look at this special card that I drew for you. And this could be for you for the whole year. So in addition to the words action and love uh, for 2020, you've got the word restore. So let's have a look at what is being said here very interesting restore all right so this is my little bonus gift for you this comes from Sherilyn Darcy I believe she is I believe she's Aussie like me actually so that's really cool uh, restore rain lily now it says here a change for the better is coming and opening up to new possibilities you are right in the path of benefit fantastic things are moving now and the direction is changing in your favor but you must be prepared to compromise a little the timing may not be exactly to your liking but the outcome will be worth any extra waiting or work on your part cleansing and a change in the way you might have approached things in the past are needed this is not a frantic pouring but a steady methodical and careful release to protect what it is you wish to retain balance needs to be found and kept you can find ways to do this by looking at the cycles that have put you where you are now. That's really good. Challenges are overreaction and hastiness. Affirmation. I welcome change while nurturing restoration. That is good. I like that. I like that too. Uh, keywords. Restore. Timings. Cleansing. Balance. Change. 
an overreaction. So that is, you might want to meditate on this word restore. This could be something that's relevant for January. This could be relevant for the entire year. I don't know, but know how, what the longevity is, but I'm kind of, I drew this for the year for you. So see how you go with that. And I find I like to have singular key words to work with. Um, sometimes I find just a word to be beneficial, not an affirmation. And I found that out recently when I was listening to Amanda Ellis. She listed this amazing list of words with, with words like calm and regal and um, balance and you know, just, just looking at singular words. So if restore is a word that you would like to include, um, definitely include it amongst two words, love and action, which are gonna be really key for next year. Aries Moon, I wish you an amazing 2020. I wish you good health. I wish you prosperity. I wish you abundance, joy. And I wish you well. I wish you well. I truly wish you well. Aries Moon, thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Taurus Moon. Taurus Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, I don't know when you're watching this. You might be watching this December. I'm doing this on December 18th. Um, so if you're watching this before the solar eclipse, how is it going? <laughs> um, if you're watching this after the solar eclipse, how did it go? <laughs> right? So um, the sun is leaving the solar eclipse. Let's just pretend. Well, let's go with my notes here and pretend that this is January. Sun is leaving solar eclipse. Hopefully you're feeling a lot more clear, uh, a lot more free. Hopefully you've let go of something toxic. Okay, so I don't know what's going on for you, Taurus Moon, but I'm telling you now, it might be that you've had to let go of something that's... The, do you know, and it could be a toxic dynamic, okay? Don't ever think that you lose the person, right? Love the person, let go of the toxic dynamic, okay? So don't, don't you're not losing people here. Don't worry about that. Early part of Jan, right. Now, in the early part of January, this is a kind of general thing that I'm telling all signs. Please donate your old things. Donate what you don't need anymore, right? Uh, meditate if you can, setting the intention for the whole year. Now, the key word for you to meditate on is sensitivity. So for every single sign, in addition to the words love and action, which are the two key words I believe are for 2020, um, I'm giving you a third word as a gift and your word is sensitivity. How beautiful, because I think it's the sensitive souls and the sensitive hearts that are going to really prosper next year. Now I will read out, this comes from, this word is a card that I drew from Cheryl and Darcy and I'm going to read out what sensitivity means at the end of this reading. But let's continue on with the sidereal Vedic outlook. So we've got Sun entering Capricorn on 15 Jan. He's ready to work. A lot of planets are getting ready to work. Uh, Saturn is definitely getting ready to work. Sun is okay in the ninth. Um, for you, he's going to be better when he enters Aquarius Feb 13, all right? So if this month you don't quite get that cracking start to the month that you might want, don't worry about it. Um, your time to shine and, and do better is, is coming Feb 13, right? Uh, Venus is in the 10th house. Keep your focus on work. It might not be flourishing for you just yet, but keep your focus on work. Keep working. Keep, keep at it. Mars in the seventh could be producing challenges in your relationships or your business. So that is just something to watch out for there. Uh, don't be in too much of a rush, okay? If you need to slow things down, business-wise, relationship-wise, slow things down. Good idea. We have a penumbral lunar eclipse, 10 Jan, Punarvasu, second house for you. Okay, so I've got a note here. Be careful how you communicate with family. And this is a particularly psychic time, right? Uh, observe your dreams, observe signs around you and just get a feel for maybe spirit is trying to speak to you, listen. Okay, that's um, around 10 Jan. Now let's take a look at this keyword for you, sensitivity. Sensitivity, right, so it says emotions, feelings, Apologies, Taurus Moon, it just got cut. So where was I? Sensitivity. I think I was reading this out for you. This is lovely. I had a, just a quick read as I was putting the file on the 
on my Mac. Uh, emotions, feelings and sensitivities are all very strong at present and may cause decisions to be more difficult. You might even find that a clear answer is not possible at all. Be extra considerate and kind to others because someone really needs you and your compassion. And you might have to give that distantly, okay? Uh, the core of an issue will be difficult to see right now, but patience and a gentle approach will assist in understanding. A romantic encounter, an increase in feelings of love for someone, and the deepening of commitments are all possible. This is due to a change in the energies associated with true feelings for the better. This is a good time to express how you feel about someone or something. Be aware that under the energy of Knight Gladiolus, a person can easily fall into the role of victim due to the rise in everyone's emotions and sensitivities. Okay, and especially if you're watching this pre-solar eclipse, yeah, just take time out, rest, and, and, and silently give love to that someone if that's all you can do. Affirmation. I make space and boundaries for feelings. Beautiful. Keywords. Sensitivity, empathy, compassion, romance, feelings, neediness, and victim. Wow, it's really powerful. So, Taurus Moon, basically the keywords for you are action and love is, is for everybody. And the third one, which is my little gift to you uh, from myself and Cheryl and Darcy, <laughs> is the word sensitivity. And you can meditate on that for today, for the next week, the next month, the whole year, however you take that word in. Um, you know, and I know for me, yeah, the word that is uh, my one is, uh, I'm going to hang on to it for the year. You know, I read my one, I was like, wow. All right, so Taurus Moon, I wish you well. I wish you a wonderful 2020. I wish you, I wish you get to manifest your heart's desire. And I wish, I mean, it sounds like there's a bit of romance in the air, Taurus Moon. So, you know, uh, definitely be manifesting some of that. That sounds good. Who doesn't want a bit of that in their life? So good on you, Taurus Moon. And I mean, look, manifest beauty. A Taurus Moon, come on, Taurus, right? You go and buy yourself something beautiful. <laughs> go shopping. You know, I hear that next year people aren't going to be shopping as much. Anyway, that's another story altogether. Consumerism is going down across the board. We all know that. All right. Now I'm going to welcome Gemini Moon. Gemini Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, I don't know when you're watching this because I'm recording this on the 18th of December. And you could be watching this pre-solar eclipse. You could be watching this after the solar eclipse. I have no idea. So let's say, and I've got my notes are written in the event that you, you know, you're watching this in January, okay? So I've got here, sun is leaving the solar eclipse. Hopefully things have clarified in your relationship sector in regards to business, in regards to partnerships, in regards to marriage. This is a big house for you, Gemini Moon. There is a lot going on. I mean, depending on where your ascendant sits, uh, oh, yeah, you could be having quite a tough time. Um, so I, t I understand. Okay, uh, let's have a look here. Let me just make sure that I'm plugged in. Yeah, I am. Yeah, clarified in your relationship sector. Big, big time for you. Um, early part of January, please donate old things. Uh, meditate if you can, setting your intention for the whole year. And your keyword is readiness. Wow, what do you have to be ready for? Okay, this is really interesting. Um, so for every single sign, I'm telling them, okay, I'm telling everybody, focus on two words for the year, action and love. These are the keywords. And if you wanna know more about that, watch my introduction. But for every single sign, I have looked up the Flowers of the Night Oracle. This is just like a little bonus gift, a little extra thing I'm doing for everybody. Because I want you to start this year well, and your Gemini moon, so two voices, you'll appreciate this. Um, I, I want everyone to start the year with what I have to say and what someone else has to say as well. And, and Cheryl and Darcy is just such a beautiful lady. And I thought I'd give everyone a little gift of, um, of one word uh, from here because her cards are all one word. And um, you got the word readiness. So I'm going to read that at the end. Uh, let's have a look at what's going on sidereal Vedic. So 
got the sun entering Capricorn on 15 Jan. You gotta get ready for work, ready to work. We're all getting ready to work. This is work time. Saturn's getting ready to work. He's excited. I mean, he's going home, but of course he's gonna work because he's all about work. Uh, now the sun is okay in the eighth house. Yes, um, he'll be better when he enters Pisces, March 14. All right, okay. So look, I mean, your sun isn't strong until sort of March 14th. Uh, Venus is in the ninth house, great time to study, great time for concentration, great time to be tuning into gurus uh, or astrologers or people that you think are interesting. So great time to be learning and indulging in that kind of thing. So that's great. Oh, fantastic. Mars is in your sixth house. Yes, no, brilliant. You've got, well, yeah, I've got a nerd here. You've at least got energy for battles. Fantastic. So yeah, I mean, if you've got sort of battles or people to take on then uh, then that's really good uh, we have a penumbral lunar eclipse but at, mm, go easy on that look I'm telling you now Mars in the sixth don't yeah, we'll, we'll read what readiness says all right we'll see what that's about but let's keep going here we have a penumbral lunar eclipse 10 Jan Punar Vasu first house uh, yeah okay be careful with how you communicate with anyone be very careful. Communication is very important uh, for you. It's essential and um, you must communicate. So don't be neglecting or putting off uh, communication or anything like that. Let's have a look here. So 10 Jan, Puna Vasu, first house. This could be a particularly psychic time for you. Okay, observe your dreams and just be careful how you communicate with with people. Let's take a look at this keyword for you, readiness, because it really is quite interesting. What do you have to be ready for? And this is a keyword I've chosen for the year. So let's see what this is about. Readiness. There is work to be done, but there is going to be great benefit also. You are reminded to remain ready. And this means not leaving things to the last minute or neglecting the finer details. The advice of someone you trust or who is experienced or successful in the area that concerns you will be of immense value right now. Don't put it off any longer. I'm getting a strong don't put it off any longer message, right? There's something that you keep putting off. Um, that's not going to work. And as I say, next year is about action, right? And it's about love. You've got to get on with it. Uh, examine every possibility and do not pass over anything without having a closer look. You've got Mars in the six, so that's good. He'll help you with that. Nottingham catch flight is all about the small details, which we must be ready to address. Triple check any contracts. As I say, Mars in your sixth. I mean, this is a great way to start the year for you. Uh, agreements or purchases you are making and be extra vigilant to remain honest and within the letter of the law. Fantastic. Challenges include lack of commitment, laziness, apathy and distraction. Yeah, I, I, I can kind of feel that. And I do think, I kind of feel like Feb, I'm sure Feb, Feb, March are going to be better for you. So you're one of the signs where it's not a cracking start to the year, but you know, Feb, March, things are going to get a lot better. Affirmation, my readiness and vigilance are always focused and true. Fantastic. Keywords, readiness, vigilance, honesty, honesty beautiful word right I love that word uh, commitment another word that's fantastic details apathy distraction okay so Gemini moon I wish you well I wish you prosperity I wish you your heart's desire I wish 2020 is a year like no other I wish it blows your mind I wish it you know I, that you you manifest your true heart's desire in 2020 I truly wish you well and we are now going to welcome Cancer Moon. Cancer Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now in this time's little mini report, I am going to be going over your sidereal Vedic um, report here, what I've had a look at as of yesterday. I did everyone's charts. Um, and I'm also going to be drawing a card for you from the Flowers of the Night Oracle. This is beautiful. This is written by Cheryl and Darcy. It's really, really lovely. So in addition to the two words, love and action, which are the two key words I've chosen for next year, 2020, um, 
I'm going to be giving you a third word for you to meditate on and reflect on. So now if you're tuning into this, now I don't know when you're watching this. So I've recorded this on the 18th of December. Now if you're watching this pre-solar eclipse, I hope it's going to go well. Um, if you're watching this after the solar eclipse, how did it go? Uh, let's have a look here. So I've written all of this in terms of that it's January and that you would have gone through it. So I'm saying, you know, hopefully things have clarified in relation to health, competition, legal battles, the cases happening in your sixth house. Um, yeah, and I mean, depending on your ascendant, your ascendant will show more information, would give me a really good gauge as to what's happening in your life. Um, I don't know what your ascendant is, so I can't say. Uh, but I mean, look, things things might have kicked off there in that sixth house. I, I, hope, I hope you're okay. I hope things aren't too hectic for you. Um, you know, I really hope that, that, that you're doing you're doing good. Uh, early part of January, if you're able to, please donate old things. Give away your old things that you don't need. And meditate if you can, setting the intention for the whole year on your keyword, which is devotion, which is such a beautiful word, isn't it? I love that word. So we're going to read what that word devotion means in a moment. Let's take a look at what is happening in the sky for you so January Sun enters Capricorn on 15 Jan Sun is ready to work a lot of planets are getting ready to work it's all about work it's about go 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 Sun is pretty good in the seventh house um, but he's gonna be a lot better for you when he enters Aries April 13 okay so that's a little bit of a way away um, if you find that this month of January it's not the great big cracking start to the year don't worry about it we've got really cool events happening in Feb we've got you know Saturn entering uh, Capricorn there that's going to be very exciting so I'll be doing a video about that so don't worry there's more news happening but um, you might feel that this this might not be the best start to the year well it's not so bad Venus is in your eighth house is great for love and romance and, and time with the family perhaps a little bit of travel even uh, Mars in the fifth got a note here be careful with how you speak to children or your romantic partner um, you just might want to you know ease off a bit there we have a penumbral lunar eclipse happening on 10 Jan Punarvasu 12th house so what's that all about that's going to open up your spiritual side this is really quite beautiful I've got a note here watch out for messages from the divine um, it's a particularly psychic time so observe your dreams okay or observe messages coming in to you from spirit they're going to be able to talk to you so that's we're really looking at 10 Jan there that's something that you want to look out for now the key word that we have for you is the word devotion so let's check that out god that's beautiful i'd love to I'd love to have that word for me i'm, I'm just going to adopt it right now uh, <laughs> i can do that i'm an astrologer i'm all signs um okay devotion your commitment to something oh this is beautiful your i'm sorry i'm so excited i'm reading ahead your commitment to something will result in achievement and reward well deserved cancer moon this is fantastic completion is within reach and happiness is indicated so there could be cause for celebration wow and look th this might not be january look at the whole year okay Me meditate on this for the whole year let's wish this for you for the whole year okay um, and it could be your spiritual commitment you know this is beautiful acknowledgement is forthcoming for the part you may have undertaken in a community endeavor or in a relationship this acknowledgement should lead to fulfillment of plans and dreams beautiful some will find their perfect match soulmate or friend my god I mean it just keeps getting better which makes life seem very rewarding and much fuller a promise will be honored and this will bring about a change in current circumstances cycles are coming to their end and new ones are ready to begin great dreams are becoming much more attainable as are all present energies so challenges are broken promises and people not having an understanding of another's focus and source of happiness okay affirmation i will straight stay true to my commitments beautiful keywords devotion completion fulfillment optimism achievement broken promises oh wow cancer moon that is beautiful so i'm hoping and it says here royal lily this is really really special so my wish for you cancer moon is that 2020 uh holds the promise of 
holds the promise of all the beautiful stuff in here. My God, I mean, you know, you'll find your perfect match, your soulmate or friend or, you know, connection, deeper connection with the divine, um, and deeper devotion. So beautiful, um, Cancer Moon. I wish you an absolutely sensational 2020 uh, that's, that's filled with magic and beauty and love. So thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for subscribing. And we are now going to welcome Leo Moon. Leo Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, I don't know when you're watching this. You could be watching this before the solar eclipse. You could be watching this after the solar eclipse. I don't know. Uh, because I'm recording this on the 18th of December. So um, I've written this in such a way that, uh, you know, it's January. So the sun is leaving the solar eclipse at this stage. Hopefully things have clarified in relation to romance or children or your creativity, your creative output in the world. Hopefully maybe things have been shaken up there. Now I don't know where your ascendant is. That will give me a very good picture as to how the eclipse is manifesting for you. But um, certainly in relation to romance or children or creativity, something might have happened there. Uh, early part of Jan, I've got a note here, please donate old things. And if you're able to, you can meditate um, on setting your intention for the whole year and I've got your keyword as focus so in addition to the two keywords that I've selected for the entire year which is love and action and we've also got from Sherilyn Darcy flowers of the night oracle I drew these cards um, yesterday when I was creating all my notes and your keyword is focus so we're going to read that at the end uh, now let's have a look sidereal Vedic um, what's happening in the sky for you sun enters Capricorn on 15 Jan uh, the sun is ready to work sixth house oh this is great this is a great way to start the year good on you good I'm glad I have some good news to report uh, Venus is in your seventh house that's not so good so not great for a, a relationships um, or to start new things relating to business Feb 2nd onwards is better okay so hang in there might be a little bit of you might have to wait for something there um, Mars in your fourth house part of you might be feeling restless perhaps you can channel some of that energy into home repairs if you've got some spare energy um, mind you this placement may might be frustrating I don't know I feel like your energy shouldn't be too bad this month but if if you've had quite a rough year uh, and it has been a bit too much for you you might want to take it a bit easier and as, as I say I think things are going to ramp up for you a bit better in Feb um, we have a penumbral lunar eclipse happening 10 Jan Punarvasu 11th house uh, I've got a note here try to communicate with the divine what you wish to fulfill this year so that's really on the 10th Jan for you specifically all right how this is playing out for every single sign is quite a bit different so um, for you specifically try to communicate with the divine what you wish to fulfill this year now I've got a note here that it's a particularly psychic time please note your dreams okay take note of your dreams keep a little journal or diary next to your um, next to your bedside or just be in tune with the divine sorry my top is a bit just have to fix that looking into my whiteboard to sort out my shirt I just like this to be a bit anyway um, <laughs> sorry I get distracted sometimes it's because we're talking about that it's a psychic time and then I go whoosh into the psychic ethers and I completely get distracted. Now, let's focus. Oh my God, look at that. Your keyword is focus. Of course it is and I'm not focusing. I'm being distracted by my shirt. Right, let's have a look at this, Leo Moon. We have to focus here. Look at the divine is asking us to focus. Let's focus. I'm going to focus right now. Okay focus do you know this came up for me I actually drew this card for myself like a few weeks ago and I'm like yeah I need to do this okay focus is required at the moment watch what you are doing because you and your actions are being watched closely this can be a double-edged sword and tuberose does indicate that care should be taken so the flower that comes with this card is tuberose be generous in all your dealings don't hold back in sharing what you have as withholding can be easily misinterpreted and you risk missing out on an opportunity because your message fails to reach the right places. Fascinating. This includes letting people know your feelings and plans. Absolutely. Let people know your feelings. And that's hard to do sometimes. I really know how that is. Um, but you'll find a way. You will find enjoyment by planning a special break or event more than you anticipated. 
Beware of temptations that hold a greater risk than you may be willing to live with. Wow, should things not go your way. So affirmation is my focus is steady and strong. Oh, I love that. That's very good. Keywords, focus, generosity, desire, pleasure, attention, temptation, and risk. That's a really interesting word right there, risk. Uh, Caroline Mace is one of my favorite spiritual teachers, and she says, when the divine's pr giving you a couple of options, and if one's high risk, she says, take the high risk. And that's if you're on the spiritual path, okay? And it's, tell me what I've done that, and it's, uh, sometimes it's not a good thing. But, <laughs> but it makes life a lot more interesting, I can tell you that for sure right now. Look, Leah Moon, it's been an absolute pleasure. Now for your 2020, I wish you dreams lined with gold that all come true, you know, in your hands. I wish that, you know, if you think it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. That's what I wish for you. I wish that you manifest what your heart truly desires. Um, I wish that you're free of um, burdens or stresses or health issues. I wish that your abundance comes to you. Um, I wish you all the best stuff. And say to the universe, hey, I'm ready for the best stuff. I'm ready for the good stuff. Give me the good stuff. That's what someone told me to say, and I love that. She said, tell the universe, bring me the good stuff. So that's what you've got to do. Leo Moon, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for stopping by.